welcome everyone. We are here uh, to introduce you to version three of the PMP JS uh, SDK. Uh, and my name is Julie Turner. I work for Simpraxis Consulting, and I am one of the lead maintainers of the PMP JS library. And with me is my esteemed colleague and co-maintainer, Patrick. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, thanks, Julie. I'm Patrick Rogers. I uh, happen to work for Microsoft, but uh, work with Julie on maintaining the PMPJS libraries, and we're very excited to do this new series of videos uh, introducing V3 and how to get started. Right. So we're going to do um, three videos in this series, and in this series, we're going to walk you through an introduction of PMPJS version three, and then we'll do a getting started. Uh, SPFX React.js web part that is just going to show you the very basics of getting started with V3 so that hopefully everyone can get up to speed quickly. So we're going to start with this intro video. And so what we want to start with is here we are uh, in our GitHub repo, the PMPJS repo, and this is where you would submit any of your issues for questions or um, uh, bugs or issues, things that aren't working uh, just in general or or actually enhancement requests you might also want to put in there. So you would use this repo for that purposes and also to contribute if you'd like to uh, contribute some updates to docs or new features or bug fixes. We love having people contribute, so feel free to do that as well. Um, also on this page, you can see right there under the about section on the right side is a link to our documentation and we've made a big effort in version three to update our documentation. So that is as comprehensive as we can make it. Obviously, there's always room for improvement. So if you have ideas or enhancements, you'd like to see the documentation again back to those PRs. We'd love to have you uh, submit those because that's always helpful. You help uh, lift all boats by submitting your um, your requests and your changes to the library. So when you want to get started, if you're brand new to the library, then you would want to just go right into the getting started guide and start from there. However, we believe there's probably a lot of people who are transitioning to version two of the library. So they're going to want to start with the V2 to V3 transition guide. This guide We'll go through, um, starting at the top there, we'll go through you know, what the uh, changes and advancements were to V3, why we did those. Um, we're gonna talk about some of the major changes in here, the switch from global uh, 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 objects and what that means to you, uh, some of the things that we dropped, batching changes, and the move to uh, what we're calling uh, the, uh, uh, FI interfaces or the functional interfaces for each of the SP and graph objects that you might be used to. So you want to review this document as a starting point, read it all, make sure that you uh, know what's happening. And then also you're going to want to visit our change log. We have a link right up at the top of this transition guide document to get to the change log. That's going to show you um, down in the V3 area. It's going to talk about all of the changes that were made and removals that were made from the V3 library. There's not a ton, as you can see, but we did do some cleanup when we moved from V2 to V3 for things that were no longer needed or no longer supported, et cetera. So you're going to want to review that. And also right there is a link for the full sample project that we're going to be demoing in over these next three videos. So if you want to, uh, see that sample in more detail and get access to it, you can go right to that sample link. Another thing that we've done with version three is we tried to enhance some of the basic library usage docs. So what we have here is a completely reworked authentication uh, documentation. So for all the different authentication scenarios, we've outlined those as a little bit more clear. You can see over on the right, the table of contents really breaks them out in the different authentication scenarios that you might need. So this should cover most everything that's necessary for doing authentication with the library. We also have a new section on batching and one on caching as well, as those two sections have been rewritten uh, to in, take advantage of the new feature, internal library features of V3. So those are really important. Uh, we also have a section we call project presets, and we're going to be going over that in V2, but it's the way that you handle the fact 
that the SP object and the graph object are no longer globals to your library. So we'll want to uh, go over those. You'll want to go over those. And then there's a section also on typings. One of uh, oft requested or often discussed issues is when you're getting items from a list, which is a, a a primary function that people use the PMPJS library for, how do you go about typing the items that you're returning from the library? And so we've added a section on uh, documenting how to do that, as well below uh, that a section on using behaviors, and behaviors are the new concept of how to extend the library and how to utilize some of the function like caching and uh, P using PMP logging, et cetera. So, Though that's also a really important section to go over and sort of get uh, um, a feel for. We also have an advanced section. We're not going to go into it today, but if you want to learn more about the internals of the library and uh, what you know what changes were made and get detailed docs on how it all works under the covers, uh, we've added this new advanced section and it uh, really goes over in detail how the internals of the library work. Plus, there's an extra um, document at the end about client-side pages, which is a fairly complex area of the library. So if you are working with client-side pages, you'll want to maybe review that for some of the more advanced techniques that you might need. All right, so that concludes our first video. In our next video, we're going to go into getting started with that basic SharePoint framework React.js web part and uh, show, it, show, it all, show you all how to get started. Great. Looking forward to that, Julie. Talk to you soon.